Reading with your kids. Hola, Niho, Kunichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Moni Muli Wanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted and so very honored and so wicked happy that you are joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Linda Hansen. She is here to celebrate Otto the Otter a big surprise. Before we invite Linda into the studio, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by Stanley, the claustrophobic miner by Donnie Abbott. I, you, you got me at the title. I mean, this, I just absolutely love the title. I love the book. Stanley, the claustrophobic miner is a delightful tale about a boy who wants to be just like his dad. He has hopes of striking it rich in a gold mine. But along the way, he comes face to face with his greatest fear that requires a clever, creative solution. With help from his mom and a reassuring song, Stanley overcomes his fears and helps others along the way. We all have something to overcome. Learn about the creative way that Stanley overcame a very common phobia. Visit DonnieAbbott.com to purchase your copy of Stanley the Claustrophobic Miner. This episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is also brought to you by the Rhyme Time Twins, a great series by Etain Raphael. We spoke with Etain Raphael not too long ago. She introduced us to the first book in the series. It's called Words Take Flight. And in that book, we meet Chloe and Zoe, twin sisters who rhyme when they speak. At first, they feel very self-conscious at their new school because some of the other kids tease them for talking in such an odd way. But then, they start to make friends as they partake in their favorite activity, storytelling. Other children around them are absolutely captivated by both their words and their imaginations, and the girls soon learn what real friendship is all about. You, you want to definitely check out this book, this series. It's The Rhyme Time Twins. The first book in the series is Words Take Flight. And they're written by Etain Raphael. Join us right now from the Tampa area of the great state of Florida. Our guest today is here to celebrate a beautiful picture book. It's called Otto the Otter. A big surprise. Please welcome to the show, Linda Hansen. Hey, Linda, how are you? I am great. Thank you so much for having me here. And good morning to all of your listeners. And uh, good morning to you. Thank you. I'm excited to have you on. Uh, Lynn was telling me a little bit about Otto. Uh, and Otto um, exists in real life. Is, is that, That's what you're telling me, right? Otto exists in real life. We moved to Florida seven and a half years ago. We have a small retention pond that is part of the property we own. And while we get to see these amazing wading birds of all kinds, we also have this otter. And I named him Otto. Awesome. 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 The, the, Linda and I both started uh, our conversation before we started recording. Um, as I've mentioned here in the podcast, we live next to a wildlife preserve. And being in the city... In, in our home is within the city of Boston and being able to look out and to see deer and eagles and hawks and all sorts of rabbits in, in there. Rabbits like it's like a school bus lets off with rabbits every day. It's crazy, but it's a real, it's a real treat. And it sounds like you feel the same way living next to your little pond. It's more than a treat. You know, it's a it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. We get to see obviously rabbits. We we have coyotes in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. and where they're beautiful to look at, they have been known to take dogs and, and cats from yards. So they're they're predators. At night, the sound of the frogs is deafening. It, it's just amazing. And then I can't begin to tell you how many turtles there must be in the pond. 
And in the birds that we see, we have red shoulder hawks, we have um, every kind of heron you can name, green herons, tricolored herons, little blue herons, great blue herons. Have you ever seen a snowy egret? I have. Yes, they're amazing. They are amazing. For people, our listeners who don't know, a snowy egret is a small version of the big white egret, and they're white, and they look just like them, except I call them Frankenstein. <laughs> and so our listeners understand they have black legs, but at their ankle, from their ankle to their foot, is bright yellow. And so I think that Dr. Frankenstein was working <laughs> on them. <laughs> Well, it's obvious that you have a great love and a great passion for wildlife and nature, and I'm sure you've brought that that passion and love into the story of Otto the Otter. I do think it is there, and this is my very first book. I had never written a book. It had never entered my mind to write a book, but last spring, when the big surprise occurred, Everybody in our subdivision learned about it. So at the end of the workday, there'd be 10, 15 people on the sidewalk watching the pond. And one of my neighbors kept telling me, you should write a book. And I would look at her and I'd go, I don't know how to write a book. And she didn't leave me alone. So finally, one day I sat down and I wrote the manuscript. Now, it so happens that Four years ago, I started to do watercolor. So I'm also an artist. And as opposed to having an illustrator Mm -hmm. illustrate my book, the book is illustrated with my watercolors. So I tell people the book is my work from the front cover to the back cover and everything your eye sees in between, including the words. Mm -hmm. And... um, So I wrote the book by accident. And you're right, I merged my passion for animal life. Did not know what STEM meant. (laughs) And when I sent the book to the manuscript to be edited, the editor said, you meet STEM requirements. And I very naively, one might say stupidly, said, what STEM? And she said, your book is perfect for schools because you're educating them about otters. So it's this wonderful story of a big surprise Mm -hmm. as well as it's educational. Yeah. What are the things about otters that we're going to learn by reading Otto the Otter, Otter, A Big Surprise? They can hold their breath for eight minutes. It's mighty impressive. I found that to be astounding. And when we watch them, they they get their food from underground. They are meat eaters. They're carnivorous. They eat no vegetable life. So in the pond, they eat the frogs. They eat the turtles. They certainly eat the fish that live in my pond. They eat crawfish, anything that's meat. And so they die down. They have very long whiskers, and the whiskers are like fingers to them because oftentimes water is muddy or murky, and it's just not clear, and so they wouldn't necessarily be able to see mm-hmm. the fish. So these long whiskers act like feelers, and, and they can feel things with it. Um, they also, so they can hold the breath for a long time, and when they're down underneath, you can see where they are because bubbles rise to the surface. Mm -hmm. So I describe that in the book. Um, They have something really interesting. They have an extra eyelid. And it's clear. So that instead of closing their eyes, this eyelid closes. And for them, it's like a goggle. Wow. So they can still see underwater. (laughs) Wow. That, that is very cool. Yeah, so I explained that. Um, they can also close their nose and their ears so that when they're underwater, they're not getting water into those extra orifices mm-hmm. or openings that we all have. Yeah. Um, That's... Then, um, I'm 
Should I reveal the big surprise? I, I, I think, I, I don't think any parent that's listening would decide not to buy the book because they know the surprise. Well, that I agree, and most likely their children aren't listening. Right. So the big surprise doesn't get revealed to the fourth page of the book, sixth page. When we discover that Otto was gone all winter last year, and we were worried about him, and then he came back one day, but Otto is not Otto. Otto is a girl. Ah. How did we know Otto was a girl? I'm feeling Otto might have appeared to have put on a few pounds. No, she brought two pups with her. Ah, oh, okay. So we now had two baby Ottos, which were definitely smaller than her. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I explain all about the process of they're born blind and they can't see. But all animals seem to be born. We can't see when we're born. Our mm -hmm. eyes aren't working. And puppies and cats don't see. So it takes them a month till they're actually able to see. They're not born knowing how to swim. She teaches them. We watched her teach them how to swim at our pond. Wow. And she has to teach them how to hunt for their food. So during that two-month process, we watched her nurse them as well. Wow. What? And it was thrilling. Yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned that, you know, living so close to nature as you do is a real blessing. And I agree. Um, our, our, our backyard is a little bit busier. So we, we and, and we're a little bit maybe busier and we don't get to see the full, you know, everything that you're seeing there. And that's amazing. It was an amazing experience uh, to watch her come out of the water. They mostly stay in the water. Mm -hmm. They, they, they sleep on land, but she would come out of the water and the pups would follow her and they would play and we would see them romp the way you would watch two puppies romp. But then she would turn herself over and expose herself and they would go and they would nurse. Um, and I didn't know anything about an otter. So when, when I do school visits and I do them fairly often, both Zooming and in person, and uh, I tell the children, I had to do my homework the same as they have to do homework so that I would learn about otters. And they, they nurse for about 14 weeks, mm. which is also in the book. Um, so that's the story of the book, but it's magical and it is educational. And, of course, now the, the pups are young adults. They're a year old. We haven't seen the three of them, mother and pups, since October. But we still see the two pups, but they've become full size. Mm. I don't know how much longer we'll get the excitement, but, but we do. We do. So That's, that's really wonderful. I, Linda, I'm curious. You mentioned that this is your first uh, children's book, and you shared with me that you um, – worked a summer here in Boston many years ago. Uh, so this wasn't, being an author wasn't your, your, your profession. A lot of people at your age kind of think, eh, it's time to chill out, relax. But you did not make that choice. You not only became an author, but you became an illustrator and an artist at this point in your life. Where do you get, and, and I admire that. I think that's fantastic. And I think that that is why you have this big radiant smile on your face and there's so much energy in your voice as you're speaking about your book. Why is it that you were able to make that choice to go out and continue to grow and learn at, at your age in life as where so many of your peers and so many of my peers are like, eh, time, to, time to sit down and put on Netflix and watch it until I get to the end? Well, let me go back and say from the 25 years prior to my retiring, I was the executive director of a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And um, amongst the many things that I did running that is I founded a camp for children. So I retired and everybody said, what are you going to do? Because I've always been high energy. And what I realized, although this happened by accident, is I think that 
we are never too old or too young to make a change in our life. If you're 20, if you're 40, if you're 60, if you're 80, and you say, I want to try something different, I want to try something new, then do it. And so when somebody said, can you do this? And I said, no, I thought, well, maybe I can. So I did it. And now I'm at an interesting stage. So to me, that's a real important lesson Mm -hmm. to learn. You can always do something new. And I think that that's what helps keep me young Mm -hmm. and energized and my brain working because I'm having to think. And now that I've written the book, it's all about marketing the book, as you certainly well know. Mm -hmm. And so I'm knocking on doors, which is phone calls. Some cases I'm walking in cold. If you don't knock on a door, not only will the door stay closed, the person behind the door can't open it and say, yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's the same kind of thing that you're just pushing yourself to go further, learn more, do more, be new. I love that. I love that. I love that. So important to continue, as you said, continue to meet, move forward and, and be new. I like that. And it's such, it's a real different way of saying renew because it's be new, create, recreate yourself. And it doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. What a great lesson that we can teach our young people, especially those kids who maybe struggle in, in second or third grade. You know, that maybe they're having some kind of learning challenge. But but whatever the reason is, at some point during that year, they've become to identify themselves and their classmates or teaching me have come to identify them as problems or having, you know, trouble in school. And what a great time as we're entering the summertime just to be able to sit down with our kids and say, hey, you can be a new student this coming year. You can make the changes and leave that old, all those challenges behind you and come in, start the school year fresh and be a new person. And I, it's interesting. I love the way you said that because when you compared renew to be new because it is, it's be new, Mm -hmm. be something you never were before. Right. Be smarter, be thinner, be a faster runner. You know, those are new things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Be a more curious person. Be more connected with nature. Be a kinder person. Right. And and try something new because if you you can try it and maybe not like it, that's okay. Mm-hmm. The point is try it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then I'm wondering if there's ever something that you, because I know that just from speaking with you, you've tried lots of things in your life. Um, is there ever something that you tried and you said, yeah, we're not going to do that again? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's not that I'm not physical, because when I was young, I was a dancer. Mm-hmm. And I did modern dance and ballet, and and, and I was a good dancer. But I am a terrible, awful athlete. (laughs) I can't catch a ball for for anything. Um, I had a friend who had a three-year-old son who was a gifted, a three-years-old little baseball player. And he would like to play ball. And there would be three of us, the pitcher, the catcher and the hitter. One day I'm supposed to be the hitter and this child is pitching to me (laughs) at three years old and he knows how to pitch a ball. (laughs) I swung once, I swung twice. We're on about the 10th swing. I still haven't hit the ball. And he puts his little hands on his hips and he goes, window, what's the matter with you? (laughs) And I go, I can't get the ball. So he comes up to me. He takes the bat and he puts the bat out to the side, parallel with the ground. 
how at three years old he could pitch the ball and hit my bat, <laughs> which he did. And then he goes, drop it, drop it, run, <laughs> run. So <laughs> I, I fail miserably at, with his hand and eye coordination. I had a friend try to take me to play tennis once. We won't even go how bad that was. That's so those are things that I don't do. Awesome, awesome. But I am creative. And uh, I'm curious, uh, what new things are you looking to try in the future? Well, I don't know what's new, but there is at least two more, if not even three more books that are in the background. Awesome. I, I want to get this book off in a strong way, but there's going to be a book that doesn't have a definite title yet, probably something like Otto and his feathered friends, which will be about the birds that mm-hmm. are, that come to the pond. Um, I've had a lot of people push me to do a turtle story because of the turtles that are in the pond. Mm-hmm. I not, that might be down the road. I have already written the manuscript. I haven't done the paintings of a story called Little Boy Lost. And it's about a little tiny dog that weighed about six pounds that we found last October, three doors from us. And we brought him into our house and we did everything you're supposed to do that would be appropriate to find his home, which never happened. And that's going to be part of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, but he now has a forever home. That's wonderful. And so I, Little Boy Lost, the manuscript's been written. I just need to get the paintings done. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you know, you mentioned that uh, now as a as a former executive and now as an author and illustrator of your own book, Otto the Otter, a big surprise, you understand that it's really important for you to get out there and do some marketing. So let's do some marketing. Let everybody know where they can find out more about Otto the Otter, a big surprise, and also find out more about you. Okay. They can go to my website, which is www.lindahansenauthor.com. And Hansen is spelled H-A-N-S-E-N. Wonderful. They can go to Facebook and find Linda Hansen Author. So those are two ways of finding me. They can purchase the book on my website, Mm -hmm. which if they purchase it there and they ask me to inscribe it, I can do that. And I love doing that. They can also buy it from Amazon, which if they do, I can't sign it. Right. Uh, it's also available at Barnes and Noble on their website. It's available at Target on their website. Uh, so those are the places where they can find the book. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we've had a great time speaking about a lot of great things, talking about being new, and also talking about the beautiful new picture book, Otto the Otter, a big surprise from our guest, Linda Hansen. Hey, Linda, thanks for spending this time with us today. It has been my honor. I cannot thank you enough for allowing me to do this and for interviewing me. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Erin Petty. We'll be joining Erin at Books and Sundry in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Beautiful little bookstore right across from Plymouth Harbor. Not too far away from Plymouth Rock and the Mayflower and all the beautiful things that are happening in Plymouth. Erin and I are speaking about her really fun middle grade novel. is called The Peculiar Haunting of Thelma B. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Hey, if you are the author of a fantastic children's book, we would love to help you celebrate your book to the world. I bet you when you set out to write your children's book, you had no idea that a huge part of your job, because becoming an author is... Well, it's not really a job. It's starting a business. And a big part of starting your children's book business is marketing and public relations and advertising and getting the word out about your fantastic children's book. 
you probably also had no idea that every single month there are thousands of books published every single month not every single year every single month literally thousands of books it's really hard to get noticed but we can help you yeah the reading with your kids podcast we've been publishing this podcast since 2017 we are podcasting og and we have a wonderful wonderful audience there's so many ways that we can help you celebrate your book you can be a guest here on the podcast it's fun it's easy and it gives you the chance in a long-form conversation tell the world about your fantastic book you can also learn about our reading with your kids certified great read program if our panel believes you, your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars it becomes a certified great read you can also celebrate your book you can also celebrate your book here on the podcast through commercials through messages to our social media following in fact we have a little following of uh 90 000 fans across all the different platforms and you we can also display your book on our nationwide network of digital pedestrian billboards really really cool and very affordable check it all out today at readingwithyourkids.com click on the office click here button at the top of the page and scroll on down to our various services I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful of course we're going to start by thanking our guest the author and illustrator of auto the honor of big surprise linda hansen also want to thank our sponsors donnie abbott author of stanley the claustrophobic minor and, of course, we want to thank Etain Raphael, the author of The Rhyme Time Twins. I absolutely want to thank my team. They are a great team. What a team. How lucky I am to have this team. Fatima Khan, Rory Grady. We have a team of great interns from Emerson College this summer. Nicole Bell Castro, Ashley Contouris, Mirabella Q, Rain Pan. I am so lucky to be blessed by... Having spent the last 33 years with my beautiful wife, I want to thank her for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.